man, you come straight out of a cone. Greetings, happy Saturday. Welcome to another edition of Straight Out of a Comic Book. I am your host, Will Farrow. Thank you for all that are joining on the live right now from all five platforms, Twitter, YouTube, Twitch. Uh, if you are here, thank you very much for tuning in. We got a lot to talk about today. We got a whole bunch of stuff to talk about today. Uh, we got some video game news. We have some um, movie news. A lot of television news. Matter of fact, reverse those two. Television news, lots of movie review and news to talk about. That's 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 the switch. So want to thank y'all for joining me today. If you are here on the live or if you are watching this, also the audio version that is available on Apple Podcasts, available on Spotify and Amazon as well. Make sure if you are watching this live, if you're watching this on YouTube, go and follow our Twitch channels. That is at Straight Out of a Comic Book and also at Will Farrow, uh, P H A R A O H. If you're on Twitch and haven't subscribed to the YouTube channels yet, subscribe to the YouTube channels, straight out of a comic book, and of course my uh, channel as well, Will Farrow, again, P-H-A-R-A-O-H, as well as all of our social platforms from Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook, those are also straight out of a comic book and Will Farrow, P-H-A-R-A-O-H, the only different one is X, X is going to be S-O-A-C-B. So just think of the acronym for straight out of a comic book, S-O-A-C-B, and you will find us on X, as well as my page, Will Farrow, P-H-A-R-A-O-H. Make sure that y'all are following, you are subscribing, so we can continue to grow this excellent and wonderful community. Uh, so, I say we go ahead and jump into and jump into it right now and jump into it with some video game news. So... For those that may have not heard, um, well, you may have heard uh, of the video game Cyberpunk. And if you have, Cyberpunk has definitely gone through a roller coaster of ups and downs from um, pulling the game to financial restraints to having to add in new things. It has been quite a roller coaster. But. In good fashion, though, CD Projekt, the uh, company that makes Cyberpunk 2077, has bounced back tremendously with the bugs and the issues that the game originally had. They have fixed it to give us the product that they wanted to deliver when it first released. And it has, as well as like the uh, DLCs that were featuring Idris Elba um, and so many more. Of course, Keanu Reeves featuring in the game, as well as Johnny Silverhand. Uh, but now they are looking to move forward with a sequel, a good old fashioned sequel and not sure when it is going to be released, but they did say that that is the next project that is in line over there. Uh, one thing they did want us to know in regards to the sequel is that they are going to be pushing the envelope, pushing the envelope for some reason so um told by associate game director and again y'all know how i am with names uh powell sasco if it's not that once again apologies um he was the associate game director and he said that the uh game's nature to not hand uh hand feeding players answers to prevailing in social issues for cyberpunk 2077 wasn't far enough as far as social commentary went um and i believe uh he has a quote in this interview where uh sasco said i see that we didn't push the envelope for enough in some spaces for instance uh like let's say the homeless crisis when i looked at it i'm i'm like we weren't far enough in cyberpunk 2077 we thought that there were uh dystopians but we just touched the surface so that's a very interesting statement for the associate game director to make that they didn't push the envelope and i will say for something that was a pretty vast world that they gave us i do agree that there it was this is this is a very this is a very uh bland way of putting it but very surface 
uh, as, as he's using, he's saying touching the surface. It was very surface. Like it was a great setup of the world, but I think we didn't really get a chance to see like exactly what's happening within cyberpunk. If that makes sense, like what are the political issues? What are the social issues? What are the economic issues that may be going? We knew that it was like, okay, you have your territories, you have, you can either be this, you can either be that. We know that some things are going on in there, but there wasn't a, a outside story per se of how the city itself, the cities, excuse me, themselves were tied in. It was more focused kind of on uh, one company that is trying to, you know, and, and focused on this particular character and how he is linked to these two now. It didn't really give us everything. Um, so I'll be very interested to see how Cyberpunk combats that. Now, we've seen video games tie into the real world, kind of like Grand Theft Auto, um, always making, you know, parodies of certain things that we know to really give us a lot of depth when it comes to building an open world. We even see some of the crossover when it comes to real life, like we've seen with the television show, The Boys, and how they are diving even deeper into the reflections of what's going on in reality. Um, so I'll be curious to see what it is that they're gonna bring, but um, even more so to that fact, I just want a great game. I just want a great game. That's it. I just want to make sure that we have a great game. And I don't want to be like a Navajo gaming girl getting lost on the highway and can't make it back. So I would even think so from not just the social sides or, or the social commentary of being put in there, but even for this sequel, I would like to be able to have better navigation. Um, I will say that about the video game. Uh, I, I do like fighting styles, even got used to the POV style, first person uh, style, although I would love a third person version in the sequel. If we can get a third person where I can actually see the character I created, that would be wonderful rather than me creating this person. The only time I see him is when I'm in the mirror. I would love to get a third person view in the next cyberpunk 2077 game uh so we're gonna see see what happens with them um once again i think one of the greatest video game comebacks <laughs> of all time it is you know belongs to cyberpunk 2077 so let's see what they do with the sequel and can they top their previous one so now that we're done with video game news, I uh, want to hit y'all with a quick little commercial real quick just to show y'all where to follow and subscribe. And then we're going to jump into some television news. Real quick, <laughs> real quick commercial, man. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump into our first television story. And that is the Suicide Squad anime. Um, the, the official title is Suicide Squad Isekai. Once again, y'all know how I am with words. If I said that wrong, my apologies. Um, the latest superhero shift into anime for dc is the suicide squad now if you've watched the adventures with superman that is available on max the anime route that they have taken has seemed pretty successful my adventures with superman is an excellent show if you have not watched it please go watch it on max the season two is currently airing there's a new episode every day um uh, on sundays i believe at 9 a.m. Uh, PST for us. Um, well, no, excuse me. Six, six comes out at 6 a.m. EST, I believe it comes out. So be sure to go and check that out. Uh, but 
with the success of that and seeing how much success they've had when it comes to the uh, anime, they've moved into it with the Suicide Squad. And the Suicide Squad is airing this anime on Hulu. I believe it's already out now. Um, and one thing that is really captivating the audience, um, not just the show itself, but the ending of the show has been sweeping the internet um, in a sense of something that we didn't know we needed. We now know we got and that we need it so bad. And that is Amanda Waller busting it down. <laughs> Amanda Waller busting it down at the end credits of the Suicide Squad. Never Never would you have thought you needed this. Never would I have thought to see Amanda Waller getting down. Now, there is a song that plays behind this. Uh, they're playing, I, I forget the, the artist's name, but it's the newest single where she says, I've been a nasty girl. Uh, that one. I know her. I know her thing starts with a T. I just don't want to say the name wrong because I know it's not title. I just uh, I always forget her name, but it starts with a T. I know that. Uh, but seeing this at the end of the first episode has just become a major trending video across social media, especially on X. Uh, it just <laughs> again, it's something we didn't know we needed. Seeing this emotionless calculating hard cold woman that amanda waller is that runs the suicide squad for those that don't know she is in charge of task force x um ruthless no games does not play will blow a villain's head off immediately if they deflect to see her in this light though i'm not gonna lie it brings a little bit more humanity to her character if I'm just being honest, and I don't think it takes away either. I actually think it kind of adds to Amanda Waller because it kind of makes you go like, okay, there is something there too. And I think that because I believe that James Gunn is going to still be making an Amanda Waller series. And I believe it still um, is starring Viola Davis. So seeing something like this, though, kind of gets us prepared to be able to see Amanda Waller in a new light than just being this cold calculating uh, figurehead for the Suicide Squad. I think it'll give her a little more depth and layers. And I don't even know if they were trying to really achieve that with this end because you just know how anime gets like animes. This is their art style. So you would even catch them having an end credit where Vegeta might be doing something like this. So to see this, though, I think it just gives us a little more of an insight to Amanda Waller. <laughs> And, and I don't know if that's just me. So y'all also let me know in the comments if, if that's how y'all feel just kind of seeing this. It kind of gives you a little bit more of, a little bit more depth to her, a little bit leaning towards, okay, Amanda, I see you out here. Go, go, go ahead and do your thing, girl. Go ahead and throw that ass in a circle if you want to. I ain't mad at you. But uh, the Suicide Squad anime is available on Hulu. I recommend checking it out. It is, uh, for the first episode that I did watch, it is a great show, uh, especially with these villains and how these villains' personalities are. To throw that into the style of anime fits like a glove. So be sure to check that out. And then also, too, let me know what y'all think when we jump on our lives and stuff, because I know, you know, these discussions will come up again. And let's talk about it. But moving on to more movie news, we are talking about Star Wars Acolytes. Um, potential spoilers, if you have not watched the latest episode of Star Wars Acolytes, I will try to not give out too many details. Um, but just, I know we are either uh, halfway through the series or I, I'm not, because I can't recall if they're doing eight episodes or if they're doing six episodes. Uh, but episode five just aired. We saw the reveal of who um, May's Sith Master is. Um, definitely called it after wa when watching this episode at the first part before it was revealed. Definitely called it. Um, now, from 
the backlash this show has got. Not agreeing with it. I still am enjoying this show. But I will say, I do see some of the missing points that have been happening with this show. And I understand, you know, why, you know, Star Wars fans are very sensitive. Um, I, I, I like Star Wars, but I'm not like a diehard fan. But I understand why the fans are getting their wear. And this is outside the ones that are like fascist, male chauvinistic fan. Not those. We're not talking about those. We're talking about ones that got some common sense that still kind of disagree with this show. Episode five did teach me that they have not given the twins a real story. I will say that after watching this last episode, who seem to be the stars of the show is the twins. It's like after this one, they took a back seat. Like I, I see now it's just kind of like, okay, I don't see what's important. Like something is important about them, but it now shows that the story is not about them. It's not about the twins. This is about something else. Um, and I don't know how I feel about that being the leading thing because now the twins are kind of confusing, um, even with the acts they do. Again, I'm not going to try to give away too much um, just so you can still go and watch it. But I will say the fight scene in this episode, in the latest episode, makes it worth continuing to watch. Seeing the battle that happened within this episode, absolutely fire. And to any one of them comments out there in the internet world that's saying that, oh man, that fight was whack, you are out your fucking mind. You are out your mind and I challenge you to give me a better Star Wars fight with lightsabers. Give me another one where they went that fire. That's out. I'm talking about live action or cartoon. Don't even tell me that that wasn't dope. Some people are really out here like, man, that choreography was whack. I'm like, are you serious? Are you serious right now? Every, and I'm talking about all the Jedi going up against this Sith. That, you know, like the little group that been trying to follow, you know, follow this guy and find him. Not, not the whole Jedi community that, you know, I don't want to mistake that. But, these fight scenes were great. I think even how where they set the setting of how they did it, how they got everything to that point, great. But I do start to see the plot holes in what's going on because um, even for this current Sith villain, we always know the Sith villain that we see has a master. So there's a bigger plan in play. But... This one still is kind of a little too vague to where it's like, okay, we we have gotten to a point in the series where we're still in the middle. Either these last next episodes can make this show be very good, or y'all are at a point where it's about to be like secret invasion. It's just like, what the fuck happened? What happened? And we already know about Secret Invasion. Like, you already know the ending, the episode, just what the fuck. So, Acolytes is still sitting there right now. It, it, it's, still, it's still getting to that point of where it's like, it's not out the woods yet. To where it can be seen as, hey, this was a great show. Definitely want a season two. Hasn't gotten there yet. And that is very alarming because, um, you know, as we've discussed on the show uh, with some of my other guests on here, like Clint Coley, Deuces, and Dion Lack, and uh, CT, we normally say, like, when we're watching these Disney Plus, uh, Disney Plus shows, that around four and five is the one where we're like, oh. <sighs> Oh, shit. What the fuck's going to happen? What's going to happen? And I will say that they did do that. They did do that. Now, don't get me wrong. In episode five, it, it was it was like, yo, but it wasn't strong enough to get them out the woods of this not of this season, not potentially tanking. So I'm very curious to see if they're doing eight episodes or if they're doing six, because if they're doing six and that means we, the final episode will air next week. Um, and I don't know if you can overcome that with one final episode. So 
that's going to be real interesting to see with Star Wars Acolytes. But like I said, it still still has me, but I'm not going to say that, man, I'm all in. I, I, I can't wait to see season two. I can't say that. I'm still on the fence of it, um, of this still being, ooh, could possibly, so we'll see though. But I would say if you are watching Star Wars Acolyte, keep checking it out. Keep seeing what they bring to the table and hey, let, let's do it together and figure out what's next. Uh, but moving into more television news, if you are watching The Boys, uh, do you know that The Boys director and showrunner uh, is the guy that uh, gave us the fantastic show Supernatural that was on the CW and I believe probably in front of the WB before it turned to the CW. Um, and in the same fashion as an Adam Sandler and a Judd Apatow, I commend him on continuously bringing back the people that he has worked with. From uh, Soldier Boy, of course, that was um, Dean in Supernatural. Uh, the latest, ep the latest season, the guy that was eating out, that multiplied and was eating out his own ass. <laughs> What's crazy is that he, that he was God in Supernatural. <laughs> that's some wild that's some wild that's a wild jump that like i gotta say he's probably the wildest jump that i've seen and even to uh gen v's the uh the the former girlfriend that um had the gloves and stuff that can uh tell you what to do and stuff um she was also in supernatural so it's very cool to see him bringing back his people, continue to work with his people. And we now know, too, that um, it's still no different as Jared. I keep forgetting his name. Jared uh, Padalecki. I don't want to. Why would we call him one of them Polanski? I don't know why I'd be wanting to call him that. But Jared Padalecki is, has also been cast in The Boys. He will, and of course, that is Sam from Supernatural. Yes, yes, yes. We, yeah, I know. Um, I'm just saying, just giving you a reference to like their other characters from Supernatural that moved into The Boys. Even the, uh, the president in The Boys used to be uh, on Supernatural. They were uh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Sam and Dean's dad. Uh, Jared Padalecki, though, has joined the cast of The Boys, and he will uh, feature in season five, and which will be the final season of The Boys. And no role, they haven't said what role he will be playing, who he is, but it has already been definite uh, it is, and, and, and it's been official that he is on the cast. And I just think that's cool, though. I think that's cool of how they did it to go. You got a season one, season two, then season three, you bring Dean in, let it let it cool a little bit. And then in season five, uh, you bring in Jared uh, Padalecki. And two, uh, King, Mike's, uh, King Mike Hall said, oh, season five is going to be lit. You are correct because that is even what the showrunner said about this. It is going to be a crazy story that they have uh, written for Jared for season five. And so it is supposed to just add to what is going to be a wild ride of a final season for the boys. And if you have been watching the boys, you already know, um, unlike Star Wars Acolytes, this one consistently keeps getting good. This one can keep this one consistently keeps doing stuff. We didn't see a lot of uh, so much craziness, which is crazy. But like the end part, of course, was was wild and, and crazy. But this one was more of a lot of peace. This is a lot of more of like that aftermath kind of that set up to get ready for these final three, which I think the final three episodes are going to be insane. And it's going to leave us just like there's no way if season five don't come out next year. Like, I can't do two years. I'm already five episodes in. Cannot wait two years for the boys. Like, the boys better start filming now. I do not want to wait two to three years for the final season of the boys. Just based off of what season five was. I you Y'all better fucking hurry up and bring it um but i look forward to seeing our boy sam in the boys cannot wait to see what role they're gonna give him uh i'm just excited i think that's one of the coolest news that i've gotten especially when it comes to the boys so um 
Moving though into the next one and the next uh, piece of news. Um, HBO has finally fully greenlit their next live action DC project, which is going to be Lanterns. That's right. The Green Lantern Corps is getting a television show. If you watched when James Gunn first uh, was announced as the runner of the DC franchise for films and TV shows and live action, then you already know these were one of the uh, series that were mentioned that were going to happen. Um, and for those that don't know, the HBO's Lantern, which is the official title for now, is in the style of one of their other famous shows, True Detective. So they're going to be shot like True Detective. They're going to be, a, 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 I think it's, what is it called? Um, anthology series. So each series will be focusing on a different Lantern. It's not going to be consecutive though it will most possibly likely be within the same universe but it will focus on different lanterns each season and this first season will be focused on john stewart and hal jordan uh investigating a murder mystery within middle america so all of these elements that they have is very interesting because these guys are galactic guardians, and we do know that Hal Jordan, of course, John Stewart, both being from Earth, have a bigger interest in protecting Earth. So to see two people with these galactic-like powers, to bring it to a level of a, like a crime drama is very interesting because we know the realism that could happen with this just of how it could be shot especially if you've seen true detective but adding the elements of them being lanterns is so fascinating to me like i cannot wait to see how they utilize this because i don't think they even need to go too crazy with their stuff you know like sometimes we see like in some of their uh animated series or movies like they'll create a big ass like baseball glove or something like that or these big ass trains or something i don't necessarily need that i really don't like i would not mind seeing like a runaway train and then you have to see one of them like make the rest of the railway for them to come in i don't mind seeing something like that i don't think they need to go extremely big with the lantern powers and i think that if they move like that I think this will be an exciting series for us. Now, don't get me wrong. It can get like that towards the end if there's like a supernatural or like type of being that they have to fight or something from, you know, like coming out from space or anything. That part I understand. But to ground it to like a street level and still have these powers, I think would be really dope. Um... And so uh, to King Mike uh, Hall that wrote, he was like, you know, you're, they're starting off with the only lanterns that matter and uh, not continuing it. So I won't say that. So like with True Detective, True Detective does jump from different people, but sometimes they come back. So like Jodie Foster is in True Detective and she was in a previous season and then they continue with a different version and then came out with a, a new season that had her in it. So it's not to say that Hal and John won't return it's just showing you a style of that because there's so many lanterns there's so many different stories to tell so you can have a different season where you're focusing on a different lantern and of course you have now you think of not only that but like time wise like you may have one that's set like in the 1100s with a lantern that's on a different planet so those are the different possibilities and then too you have different remember you have different lanterns so who's to say there's not a season where it's the it's sinestro or the first person to discover the fear lantern or the first person to wear the fear lantern uh not to discover it but the first person to wear that one that's a dope ass season that is a dope season to do so there's so many different possibilities that can go when it comes to lanterns, especially because of the vast variety of lanterns that you have available to you. So I'm excited to see it. There has been no official uh, release date of when it's coming out, of course, because it's just been announced. There is no casting yet of who will be playing Hal, who will be playing Jon Stewart, but you already know 
as they give us information, I'm going to come back and give the information to you. So we're going to continue to keep checking that out. Um, we're going to jump into some more television news. But of course, got to make sure that y'all know where to go, where to subscribe and give y'all a quick little commercial break. <laughs> So, next story in television. Our last story in television, my favorite out of all of them, The Bear. The fucking bear. Season three just dropped on Hulu for The Bear, 10 episodes. And the first thing I do want to address about this, um, uh, once again, not going to give too much away. No no real spoilers or anything like that. I'm going to give a basic review just so you have time to go watch it. Because it did just drop a couple of days ago. Don't want to give anything away. Um, but there has been a lot of talks about how people are upset that the bear was not scheduled out weekly rather than dropping all the episodes apparently a lot of people wanted them to have this show come out weekly rather than binging it because a lot of people are just like it's the show is too good for you to be binging this um i think it's a huge ball drop to not have this come out every week um there's been a lot of a lot of people saying that i am not one of those people not one of those people at all i cannot stand waiting week to week for a show. Now, do you need a mixture of them? I will agree to that. I will agree that I don't think everything needs to be dropped at once. I know that's going to sound very weird. You do need a sprinkle of those. You need a sprinkle of those. Like, for instance, I don't mind that Star Wars Acolytes is every week. I will say that. I don't mind that um, my adventures with Superman comes out each week. I don't mind those because because those are the types you don't mind waiting a week for that one. Like I don't need to watch that all in one sitting. I and I think too for those type of shows and you just got to kind of feel out the show itself. Which ones need that and which ones don't? Because if you gave me all the episodes of my adventures with Superman. I can be honest with you, I might not watch the whole season. If I'm just being honest. For some reason, I might not watch the whole season. Or I'm going to binge it while I'm working and I'm going to miss out on stuff. Um, so I see why for that particular reason why some can be dropped weekly. But for some that are just strong as fuck like the boys, you could drop all eight of the boys and you still going to have you still going to get your numbers. And I think the bear is no different. Like I, I think it's good that the bear drops all their episodes. One, all of the all the episodes range between thirty minutes and forty minutes. So to get that and then have to wait is it? This one is like at a certain pace. So you don't want to be put on this, put in this ride and put into their world, then got to wait the next week to sit back in it. It's like it works because it's consecutive. It's like, OK, now we get to the next one and it makes you do want to sit and watch all 10. So I don't agree with that, with people saying that stuff. And then also, too, why don't you show some self-restraint? Don't watch them all. You ever thought of that? Rather than getting mad that they dropping the whole thing, why don't you watch two episodes, come back, then watch another two, come back, watch another two, and then set your own schedule. Stop being a sheep. Stop trying to ruin it for other folks that do want the whole shit, who can schedule the stuff out if they want to. And me, I am a repeat series watcher. I have watched Brooklyn Nine Nine all eight seasons. I'm pro I've probably watched it at least twelve times. 
I'm talking all AC, like season one ran straight through to season eight. I have rewatched that show probably 12 times. Same, now, we're not going to say the same uh, as far as number go, but One Piece can literally rewatch that series. Uh, Carmichael show can literally rewatch all those seasons. There are some shows that are just good that has that rewatch value when you got it. So you can drop all of them. And then that way we get to talk about it. Because you can watch it. We can give less time and be able to watch it. I know a lot of people too will disagree with it because they say if it's broken down week to week, that gives you a chance to do more content and streaming. I don't give a fuck about that. I don't give a fuck about none of that shit. Because we can sit here for three hours and then talk about the whole season. And then you can break all that shit up if you want to. I don't want to come here every week dissecting episodes. We got people for that. We got folks for that shit. Let new rock stars do that. And break that stuff down for us. But like, yo, man, ain't nobody, ain't nobody, I'm telling you now, ain't no streamers tripping about us like having to do this week to week. I don't care about none of that. Now, if you got, you got, and again, you have so much television that you can make for that. And then even too, again, for the folks that do pan this stuff out and go, okay, I'm going to watch two episodes, stop, watch two episodes, stop. You can still make content because not everybody's finna binge this shit fully. So if I was making the bear, I could still make, and there's what, 10 episodes. So that's 10 clips i can still make 10 clips talking about this series and schedule this out for the next two weeks so i still have my content they don't make no sense to say that they don't have content to watch that really had me scratching my head when people said that it's just like yo and you still have so many shows that have stuff coming out House of the Dragon, The Boys, The New Lord of the Rings is dropping. There's a Suicide Squad anime. You have so much other stuff to make content for. That statement made absolutely no sense. But I say all that to say, fuck you people that don't want us to binge. Don't you take away our shit because you don't know how to schedule your own stuff. Don't make the good suffer for you bitch asses. All right? But. Jumping into the bear season three. Once again, no spoilers. Just finna give a light review. Um, season three take definitely takes a different pace than the first two. Um, it still keeps a focus on the restaurant, but we're not so much in the kitchen as we were. Um, so I like that new pace that they're giving us. A little different. Need to I'll need to watch it again just to grasp everything. Um, but great development in the story. Epic shots that they took, like camera shots, excellent camera shots this season. Oh my gosh, it helped tell the story so well, especially being able to have to catch up because in a way they had to jump through like a certain amount of time like this wasn't something that's like oh this happened consistently in the week they did a fantastic job of being able to tell this story through so many different camera shots and the way that the these episodes were framed and created oh my gosh that's what that was very good i love seeing that um i love seeing more of the interest of like how the food industry was in the eyes of, of of a chef, not just a part of being a chef and preparing a plate, but really the whole the psychology and just the mechanics of what it takes to be a chef and from their passions and what happens when you have like still like normal life to have to deal with. I love those parts about it. Now, the only takeaway that I'll say I had for this one was I would have liked to have seen more character developments in some of the characters that are in the show. They did do it for some, but I, I would have really loved to have seen some other ones and where they were going. Um, but I get why where the focus was and what the focus was for. I don't mind that part, but I would have loved to have just seen a little bit more development for some of them. But I get it because the ones that they did focus on hadn't really gotten that just yet. And so they did give that to us. And I will say this, um, 
Definitely some surprise cameos in this season. Did not see coming, but I will say, again, no giving of spoilers. The facts, uh, F-A-K-S, the, the family and the Brazado family, they need a show. Like a limited series show. I don't need them to have like a whole like with seasons and stuff. I need a one off 10 episode of of either meet the Brazados and the facts or however they want to title it. I need to see this family in a series. I need to see it. They are yo when I the, the yeah, the way that they wrote this family is so good. The dynamics that they have from the trials and tribulations of having to deal with their mom, how their dad acts, not only that, but how all the siblings are to one another and how those two families integrate. Yo, I need a show. It could be eight episodes. I'll take eight episodes, but I need a show that centers on the family itself. It is so good. But the Bear Season 3 did not disappoint. Um, no doubt that a Season 4 will happen. Um, and I look forward to it. So hopefully, again, we're not waiting two to three years for a show to come out. I know how Hollywood has uh, been. Um, so, you know, things are always changing. Stuff is slowing down. Uh, but hopefully, you know, they be able to keep it going high you know put this in high priority and give us the next season so if you haven't seen the bear check it out because it is it is a great example of a movie that does not require a movie i'm sorry a tv show that does not require so much of a budget this is shot basically in few a few places and you can focus on better talent, but how they tell a story with camera angles and um, cinematography is ah, chef's kiss. No pun intended, but it is a chef's kiss. It is so good um, how they bring you into this. So um, check it out. If you haven't watched the first two seasons, there the first se first season is eight episodes. Second season is 10 episodes, but they're 30 minutes, 30 to 40 minutes. So you can catch up real easy. Like if you don't have nothing to do tomorrow, kick back, watch the bear, binge it a little bit. Don't 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 be like these other people that's upset about it. And you'll see why I say it's okay for this to be a drop all episodes binge type show. So that's my thing for the bear. We're gonna move into some, I believe, movie news now. So going up in movie news, of course. We know people ain't going to the theater like that no more. Like we like before COVID, we wasn't even hitting the theater like that no more. Because by the time you leave the, uh, the movie theater, you didn't spent about a hundred and four dollars just to go watch a movie, and you're gonna be pissed if the movie wasn't good. Movie movie tickets are like twenty five dollars. Popcorn is thirty dollars. A soda is fifteen dollars. Nachos is for like eighteen bucks. Candy is like eight to twelve dollars. Don't and then don't try to get no little pizza things or something like that. Like it is ridiculous the price of what it takes to go to the movies. So a lot of people haven't been going to the movies, um, but it seems like that may be turning around and stuff for us uh because as it was reported inside out is now the highest grossing movie of 2024 um it has currently only been out i believe two weeks now but has garnered over uh 724 million dollars worldwide it is slated to hit over a billion and it surpassed dune 2 which was uh its uh previous highest grossing film of 2024 with i believe 711 million dollars it surpassed them within eight days in eight days which is, I see why it happens because in Louisiana, tickets are $32. So I don't know if that means not a lot of people went and paid a lot of money for the ticket or a lot of people went and paid for a medium ticket. Who knows? But 
Inside Out is killing it right now, especially only being out for a short period of time and is already slated to be able to surpass the million mark before they uh, release it on digital. Most likely going to be coming to a PS, PS, wow, Disney Plus um, within probably August, uh, maybe like first week of August, second week of August. Because as we know, movies don't even stay in theaters that long anymore. Which is crazy to me. So we'll see. We see exactly what's going to happen. But um, shout out to Inside Out 2 for having a successful box office, especially with this film. This is, I've been told to be a good film. I have not seen Inside Out 1 or Inside Out 2 because, you know, I ain't seen Inside Out 1. I already know. It's a great movie. I already know for y'all jump in the comments that you need to watch Inside Out. I can't believe you ain't watched that yet. You got to check that. I already know. I already know. It's on my list. I'm going to watch it. And then I'm going to watch the sequel. So, before you, for you, let's. I'm already aware and I'm already on it. Thank you. So. <laughs> Moving on in more news, um, the Jurassic World would it success from its, I guess, reboot, maybe? Is it a reboot? I guess or continue. I'd say continuation. I wouldn't even call it a reboot. With the Jurassic World continuation uh, with, what's that Christopher boy name? What's his last name? Oh, what's that boy name? And you Star Lord. What's boy? What's that man? What that boy name is? I sound like a seventy year old man asking this shit. What that boy name is? Uh, Pratt. Christopher Pratt. Chris with the success of Christopher uh, Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard, it is confirmed that the Jurassic World franchise will continue, and it is now going to continue with a new front runner within Scarlet. Joe Hansen. Scarlett Johansson has officially been confirmed as the lead for the new Jurassic World series that will become not series, television, uh, not television, movie franchise. So a series of movies will be coming out for the Jurassic World uh franchise. And Scarlett Johansson is nothing but excited to be playing this role. Apparently, she has been wanting to be within the uh, Jurassic World franchise. She remembers watching it, going to uh, see the first Jurassic Park back in 1997, I believe, uh, going to the movies and seeing it and just being mesmerized, even to the point where she she was willing to be just a, a bystander that got killed by a dinosaur. Um, as long as she has just wanted to be a part of this franchise for the longest and being patient has definitely paid off for her now being the front runner for this next set of movies and from what we're being told not only by scarlett johansson but by the director that these are going to step up when it comes from the last jurassic world and jurassic park franchise these next set of films are going to be something that you have never seen before so i you, you know i hear I, they, they 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 gassing it up so all we can do is just hope that, that they deliver on it. But with Scarlett Johansson there, I am sure we are to get something good. Um, it, it's Jurassic Park. Like at the end of the day, like you're never going to not want to see a movie about dinosaurs. And especially the way that they've been moving them. Like Jurassic World was good. It wasn't great. It was good. They last one where they combined both the part of Jurassic Park cast and the Jurassic World cast. I think it was good. But again, it's it's Jurassic Park. Like you it's kind of, you know they are you know what Jurassic Park is? Jurassic Park is like Fast and the Furious. Jurassic Park, I just now put those two together. Jurassic Park is like Fast and the Furious. We already know we finna get some crazy shit. It, it, it's finna be just it's one of those. It's a guilty pleasure movie, but not so much. It's just one of those like, okay, I know what to expect. Cars, action, family, some over-exaggerated scene like Tyrese and Ludacris being shot in the space. That shit. So the same formula for Jurassic Park, dinosaurs, 
white people being stupid. Bigger dinosaur that got to get made for some reason that we ain't learned from our last mistakes, but we're going to make another one anyway. You already know what you're about to get. You already know how it's about to go terribly wrong, but you still go to see it. You still be like, I'm going to watch this. I already, I already know what's about to happen. They're going to make a dinosaur, a dinosaur that shouldn't be made, and they're gonna go, it's going to go terribly wrong, and I can't wait to see it. So we already know that's what we get. That's why I say like Jurassic Park movies don't miss. It's got to be real difficult for you to fuck up that formula. Give me a new dinosaur. Give me where dinosaurs endanger humans. You good to go. So uh, no word as to when filming is going to begin or when it is slated to come out. But we do know that they have found their leading lady in this. And that is in Scarlett Johansson. So congratulations to you. Look forward to seeing what is the next chapter in the Jurassic Park franchise. Um, speaking of continuing um, a franchise and I guess wanting to turn something into a trilogy, Channing Tatum has stated in a, a recent interview that he would love to come back to do a 23rd Jump Street. Um, not only did he say that, he also included that Jonah Hill is more than ready to also want to jump into a third installation of the 21 Jump Street movie franchise. And all I can say is I'm I'm here for it. I'm I'm here for it. They've already established the fact that they old. So and they gave us like what the next sets of things could be. I, I think it's been long enough to where you can pull the trigger on doing a 23rd Jump Street just to give it a trilogy. I think giving it a trilogy would be really good even to potentially passing the torch to another set of folks that will want to continue the 21 Jump Street franchise. Um, this is one of those franchises and I'm kind of like with Andrew Garfield. I, I wouldn't mind a trilogy. Give me a trilogy just to finish it out. You know what I'm saying? We already know the antics will be there. We, you got dozens of new writers within the Hollywood world to be able to come and make this a funny film. And to say that the two stars of the films want to come back, I think just bodes even more for uh, whichever movie studio has this to, to pull the trigger. Give us a 23 Jump Street. Even bring a few a few more of the um, older cast back from the original series. You know? So I, I, I want to see it. If it gets made or not, I don't know if I go see it in theaters though. Just being honest, <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna go watch this in theaters. This for me, twenty for me, Twenty One Jump Street is definitely a buy it on Amazon and rent it on Amazon and watch it there. I don't see myself going spend a hundred and forty eight dollars at the movie theater to go watch Twenty Three Jump Street, but. I will spend five ninety nine to watch this. I'd spend five ninety nine to watch this, or just wait till it's available on streaming. But it's still one of those like I check it out. If it came out, I would. You would definitely get my streaming count. You would not get my box office count though. No, I can't do that. I can't do that. Cannot do that. Um. So yeah, we'll see what's going to happen with that. On to some more animation news, though, in movies. We have gotten an update from the legendary Eddie Murphy that Shrek 5 uh, will be released in 2025. And not only will we be getting a new Shrek film, we will be getting a donkey spinoff as well. And Eddie Murphy will be returning to voice donkey for the spinoff. Um, now... Unlike 21 Jump Street, I am not excited for this. I'm just, I'm just going to be honest. I think Shrek lost its mojo after Shrek 2. I'm just being honest. I, I think they, they lost it after Shrek 2. I think it became a thing where they were trying to do it. It's cool, but I feel like they lost their magic during this. 
during this. I got to say it. Um, I see a, a comment also on our live. Uh, King Mike Hall said, pass the torch to DC Young Fly and Desi Banks. I'd be there for 21 Jump Street. I don't think they're big enough yet to be able to be the stars of that. But I would like to see them included in it so people can get accustomed to them that don't know them like that like ourselves because you got to think you still got a wide a wide range of audience that got to get introduced to these two people us as our culture we know them like that but um i think it would be dope for them to be included into 23rd jump street as one of the groups that they you know channing tatum and jonah hill was working with the girl that was talking about they be out here finger popping each other's assholes <laughs> do you remember that group her and dakota fanning not Dakota Fanning, uh, Dakota, the, the chick from Madam Web, before, you know, she went and made horrible movie decisions. She was in there. I could see one of those pairings being DC Young Fly and Desi Banks. So I'll agree with you on that one, King Mike Hall. But um, I'm not I'm not looking forward to Shrek, man. Shrek lost his mojo a while back. Um, and I'm not sure who they kind of making this for, what season, what this is even, what Shrek 5 is even about. And stuff like is he old and retired now or his kids grown and stuff like I don't I'm not sure but I'm not excited for it I think donkey could do something dope and have success because we know puss in boots definitely stepped it up that last uh, puss in boots movie was good I'm telling you uh uh, King Mike's Hall said are you crazy they're doing millions of views DC on Netflix and Amazon Desi on tour right now Yes, give them another two years. Give them another two years. Then you can say that. Because you got to think of millions of views is great. How many box office dollars has DC and Desi made? You got to think about it like that. This is going to be a high-end action film. You know how big this budget going to be to make, twenty, let's say, 24 Jump Street? You got to give them just a little bit more time. I'm telling you, like, I know that they're doing numbers right now, but I'm telling you, you got to give them a little bit more time. Just a little bit more. But that's why I say I don't I, I, I agree with seeing them in there, but making them the front runners, they need a little bit more time in their careers. Let them get some more movies under their belts, especially Desi. Like you said, Desi just is on tour right now on Amazon, but we still ain't seen Desi act like that so we gotta see him act we gotta see him can he carry a movie uh but as far as shrek goes no donkey yes definitely won't mind seeing donkey um getting the spit off because again it's eddie murphy so as long as eddie murphy's there being funny you're gonna get it you don't even need a real like huge plot story with that so uh i look for i look forward to the donkey when shrek five okay I lo I'm looking forward to that one as much as I looked forward to Kung Fu Panda 4. At some point, these things just lose their juice. Like, it's just like you start doing too much with it. And it's just like, okay, it's just now it's just another movie. Like, Kung Fu Panda 3 was, like, decent. And then, like, it just doesn't have me excited for 4. Like, it wasn't one of those of just, like, like how Toy Story 5 was. Toy Story, Toy Story is back-to-back -back rings back to back they did not miss on any of them toy stories even toy story 4 vastly different but toy story 4 did something uh king mike hall to your point though you talking about beverly hills cop in 48 hours think about everything eddie murphy did before that came out he already had coming to america Coming to America was already ready before them drop. And then Trading Places had bigger stars in it to help him. You get what I'm saying? Like, he had bigger people in there helping him. And Saturday Night Live is a consistent show. You get what I'm saying? Like, that's what I said. That's what I said. Two years, dog, two years is not a lot of time. Two years, they will be there. But I'm still saying you need some stuff under your belt if you want that to be successful. That's all I'm saying. And yes, you could be telling the young Eddie Murphy some shit like that. There's there every everything comes down to timing. 
And I just don't want them to have that and it don't garner the success that it should. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Oh, it came before coming to America? Well, shit, there you go. But you already shown that he can act and he showed diversity and range. So, again, we, 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 we can agree to disagree. I'm just saying, like, $300 million and you tell me it's those two, I'm just speaking from a financials point. Like, I don't see them giving them $300 million budget to shoot. Not just yet. Not just yet. I need Desi Banks to have just a few more credits. Cause you uh, and two, that and it's two, it's really more on the Desi Banks thing, not the DC Young Fly part. The Desi Banks thing is really just more of what I'm on. Like, I fuck with Desi Banks. I think he is a, a, a funny comedian. But also, too, I do want to see him in something that showed me he got acting range. Like Eddie Murphy showed us that with SNL. He showed us he can act. It wasn't just stand up. We knew he can act, so you could bet on that. With Desi, I need to see that. DC Young Fly, I have no doubt. I know DC can act. I know DC can be funny. But you're talking about both of them. It, ha it has to have both of them where they're at the top of their game. See, even the easy's not point. Yeah, I can't take them seriously. Not, for, not, not yet to give them over $300 million for a film? But have them pass the torch to them and film. Yeah, we still. That's what we said. That's what I said. Yeah, that's what I said. Have them in twenty three Jump Street first as like one of the 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 uh, other side partners that you see along with them, and then like you said, have them pass the torch. That's what we. That's what we were saying in the first place. That's why I'm saying I agree with you of them being in there, but them having it right after, not just yet. Like I said, you need a little bit more time. I think that's where we just got, yeah. They need to do some plays or some low-budget non-comedy film. I mean, DC is. That's why I said DC is no concern for me. It's more Desi Banks needs to do some of those. Like, DC Young Fly is good. Like, that's why I say DC I get. Desi is just like, we still need to see just like, oh, okay, Desi can actually act. Desi can actually do stuff more than just that comedic shit with such of a budget you're going to get. You know how much shit they're going to be blowing up for them? You know how much CGI that's gonna get used in 24 Jump Street? That shit for that budget finna be crazy. That's what I'm just telling you, like, budget wise. Budget wise, that's what I mean by that. Like, that's the stuff that you gotta consider with them. DC, good to go. We just need Desi to get from right here to here. And it's and again, he only need like two years of that. That's the only thing I'm saying with that. So, um, Still within the movie news, we have just been getting more and more evidence about um, James Gunn's Superman that's coming out um, and just showing that, hey, the the accurate comic book suit is alive and well. Is alive and well. We've seen some more shots that have came in and not only from Superman, uh, who is uh, believed being played by, again, if I say his name wrong, very sorry. David Corns wet or corn set. Once again, said that wrong, do apologize. But we've seen some more set photos of him. And then now who we know of that was already confirmed in casting, Mr. Terrific. We've seen some shots of now Mr. Terrific. And they, again, when we say comic book accuracy, have not disappointed. Uh, Mr. Terrific is being played by Eddie uh, Gathenji. If you knew him, he was, I believe, um, in X-Men's First Class uh, and also The Harder They Fall on Netflix, the Western with uh, John uh, 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 Jonathan Majors, Idris Elba, and uh, Regina, uh, Regina King. Uh, good, great actor. Great actor. I think he's, uh, a, <laughs> no pun intended, a terrific choice to play Mr. Terrific. But I am just loving the accuracy that they are now going to with the comics. 
um, not trying to change up their style to try to match realistic. It's like, no, man, I'm, I'm loving that you are sticking, bringing the suits that we saw in the comic books to life. Don't mind a slight alteration. I'm not tripping about that. We don't mind some of the little alterations because we know some suits just don't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> when bringing them to live action for them as far as movements go. But with Superman and Mr. Terrific, that is definitely not the case. They have gone so comic book accurate. It is just making me more excited about what this Superman film is going to be, how it's going to be. Um, I don't want, didn't want to give too many uh, other uh, footages and stuff, uh, too much footage and stuff like that, because I know some of us that watch the show are purists. They don't really want to see anything, so try to keep it under wraps as much as I can. They have uh, video footage of them, but I don't want to be showing none of that stuff, uh, just because again, I'm like, yeah, I want to see what's gonna happen with the movie, and I can't wait to see how they portray him as Mr. Terrific. Um, even why even seeing some images of David who is playing Superman dresses Clark Kent, they changed his hair. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Clark Kent got a different hairstyle than Superman. Finally, there's a picture of him walking as Clark Kent. And he got the little, the little, um, the little curls right here, kind of like a little, like a little afro, not a little afro, but like that kind of style, kind of bushy and stuff. It don't have a little S curl. Like both of them have different hairstyles, and I'm so glad that he did that. So glad that James Gunn did that. It's just those attention to details that has me excited for this film. Um, I look forward to seeing. A trailer, not a long trailer. Give me like a minute trailer. I just want to see the aesthetic of how you're doing it. Because I feel like he's moving to shoot this more of a golden age Superman style. Rather than it being so like realistic. Kind of like how Man of Steel was. Man of Steel had this kind of tone that... um Zack Snyder gave that was very well well put to me in my in my honest opinion. But I think James Gunn is going to go for that more DC Golden Age look of Superman with the brighter colors, the uh, more of a, a, a sunshine type of uh, setting for Metropolis, not so cloudy and overcast and in gray tones like the Man of Steel was. I think we're going to start seeing them with very bright colors being used kind of like how he used with suicide squad so it's got uh, suicide squad color tones are perfection from seeing peacemaker for when they're in the night uh blood sport even uh king shark and the color tone that they have for him with that uh with that that lowish white dirty kind of uh baby blue on him and stuff and with the uh gray tones i loved how they colored those superheroes and then even had them in their classic outfits so i think that's just gonna pour into uh superman i believe legacy is what it's called now superman legacy so seeing mr terrific like this in the fashion that we know him from the comic books seems like the new dcu is getting off to a great start and marvel is gonna need to keep an eye on them because i cannot wait Till we get into the the battle of of DC and Marvel box office. Oh, that's gonna make for so many great episodes. I cannot wait for us to be able to discuss those here on straight out of a comic book. And um, moving on to um, something that doesn't seem to be getting the ball rolling correctly and the train moving right. Uh, if you are not familiar with the woman that you see here, she is actress Mia Goth. Uh, Mia Goth is known for being in the horror films Pearl and X. And then her latest one that's going to drop, Maxine, um, is a part of the Blade reboot cast. And she has stated that um, the reason why the team is behind is because they really care about the story that is being portrayed and they want to make a great movie. Now, if some of you did not know, Mia Goff, it was originally slated to play Lilith, 
which if you've seen my previous episodes, I said that was the villain that they should have focused on. And now it was confirmed and uh, Lilith was the direction that they were supposedly going to be going in and that she wanted to obtain the blood of Blade's daughter. Um, but that script has went through rewrite. So we're not necessarily sure if that's what's going to happen now. Um, but she has stated that the movie is still in full swing and that they're just trying to make sure that they get the story right and as best as they possibly can. And all I can say is just cancel this shit. Just cancel the damn movie, man. Just cancel the movie. Just cancel the movie. Okay. The fact that Mahershala has not said anything. Let's me know, like, yo, this is not looking good. Let this go. Let this project go. The fact that your star says nothing is just wild. And I think one of our uh, uh, lives, uh, Easy Night, stated that let the video game help for the future marketing. Exactly. We've stated this before on this show. I think they should treat Blade like they treated Hawkeye. Feed us through other series with him in it. So then that way it leads to something different. Because I know they don't have a full story set for him. But what they should have him set to do is try to get to Midnight Suns. That should be your other level. If you're doing Young Avengers, if you're going to Avengers uh, Secret Wars, your other one should also include Midnight Suns. Because you need that street level supernatural type of feel. And you've already had a majority of the people that's in there. And we already talked about that. But you need to you need to cancel that shit. For real. Like I like at this point now, cancel Blade, restart it, go back to the drawing board and see how to include him properly within the current MCU that you have now rather than sitting here trying to say we're still trying they want to make a great movie they really care about the script how you ain't got the script done after it's been announced no you t it's time to pack that up buddy it's time for y'all to move on to another one uh which is crazy because even in our next news it seems they're definitely moving forward with this. Um, yeah, uh, Alden's point. Matter of fact, we're gonna, we'll, we'll jump back to that. I still want to stick on this Blade one. Uh, I wouldn't take the Blade against the cartel with human trafficking. I would have took that too. I would have took that too. This is how I think I said it on a live, and I'm going to say it here on Shroud of a Comic Book. This is what needs to happen. We need to get to Midnight Sun. That should be the goal, the overall goal of this. I believe Mia Goff can still play Lilith. Lilith is the one that is behind what's going on. What it can be is, is that Blade is tracking the blood coming. And that's Baroness blood and I believe Baron blood. Uh, they can he is tracking them and what's happening is they have figured out uh, working along with a scientist um, they can be work. I forgot who I said that they could be working with, but they're literally working with the scientists to develop a uh, virus that will increase their population. So I want it to be where the vampires are not in rule right now, but they are making their strides back and Lilith is behind all of this. And so that's who Blade is focusing on. And you can see him go through this with some of the other people that are already established. I believe that he should be seen within Doctor Strange 4. And then what happens is that connects him with Wong and Wong can connect him with everyone else that needs be in there. Like, again, you now have him enter entering with Doctor Strange, who's also part of the Midnight Suns. Wong can be able to bridge the connection between Moon Knight. So now Moon Knight is included within Midnight Suns. Uh, Wong is also a member of the Midnight Suns, too. So you could also be able to use him as well. But I want him to be seen within in these type of in how the MCU is now. He's being tied into that now because of it. 
And then um, even within, like, if to say you decide we're going to do either a Blade series or a Blade show, you can still show Blade going after the uh, Blood Coven. And then who else can you include that would help him in there if you decide to not have him in Doctor Strange 4? No, have him in Doctor Strange 4 and then give him a series and stuff. And then another person that he's introduced to is Elsa Bloodstone. Elsa Bloodstone has already premiered in the MCU with Werewolf by Night. We've already seen her. And she is a current member of Midnight Suns. And then in doing so, you have her introduce him to Man Thing. Man Thing has already been, they've already seen with one another. So we already have that. Now you have most of the current Midnight Suns established already. And even if you do a series for Blade, one of his other villains within the first season could also be Dr. Voodoo, who, you know, then becomes uh, um, an associate of him and joins Midnight Suns. Now, the only ones that are remaining now is Iron Fist. Iron Fist, once again, can be introduced through Elsa Bloodstone or Wong as well as Ghost Rider. You don't even need to necessarily include Ghost Rider if you don't want to, but Ghost Rider can be introduced or what or be known through Doctor Strange and Wong. And then lastly, um, the current one in uh, Midnight Suns is Scarlet Spider, but since it's an MCU, switch that bitch out to regular Spider-Man with Tom Holland. It's already street level. I just gave you how you introduce Blade into the MCU. I literally just showed how the fuck you can do that. That simple. And you just gave all these other people who you pretty much have with the exception of a few others. I've introduced you to this. Oh, and then the one caveat I had even into the series of how he let's say let's say I'll give you another scenario of how to mix all of this in again. Here's a second one in that same type of plot. You give Blade either a series, and again, or a movie. I'm still going to say he goes after the blood, the blood coven, because they're trying to increase their population. And then let's make it a series. Guess who he pairs up with in his series? Elsa Bloodstone, Luke fucking Cage. Why Luke Cage? Because they're in Harlem. That's where Blade is hiding out in Harlem. And he comes across Luke Cage. Why does he start working with Luke Cage? Luke Cage is impenetrable from vampire bites. That's and just and just to, to King Mike's hall point. That's why I'm giving you this second scenario because of the fact y'all might have said just tried to get on me because I say his last movie was mid. We'll take Doctor Strange out like that. We'll like I said, we will give him his own series, and he links up with Luke Cage, and he links up with Elsa Bloodstone. So now you have those two and they're fighting the coven. The big bad is Lilith. That's who they're trying to get to is Lilith. That's the big bad for this. Them, the two of them meet up within this series. And then what happens? Elsa Bloodstone knows Wong. So now Wong is now included in what's going on with the vampires and what this could potentially be leading to. And we already know Elsa Bloodstone knows man thing. So man thing would not be that hard to be able to bring in as an associate for the Midnight Suns. The Midnight Suns main villain is Lilith. I just want you to keep that in mind. But you now have Wong introduced by Elsa Bloodstone, which now ties in Doctor Strange. So you don't necessarily have to be have Blade be seen in the movie, but it could be an end credit that shows we're leading to not only Secret Wars, but Midnight Suns. And that's again, Midnight Suns could come out before Secret Wars or after Secret Wars. It doesn't matter where it sits. Wong is already associated with She-Hulk, who can also link him to uh, uh, can link him to Spider-Man and Moon Knight, because Wong knows these people. So those are the two transplants that we can bring in. Luke Cage knows Iron Fist, so that's not hard. And then the only thing you have left is Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider gets his own film that can be tied in in any way we see fit. But I've already now given you how you can do Blade to be seen in either a TV show or to be seen within a film. Not this story that y'all keep trying to put together. 
Big Mac 7 even gave it something. Or Luke Cage and Wolverine have been captured to be feeding banks for vampires. Or, or also, too, you still and other people that got powers to try to figure out how to give powers to vampires. And guess what? We already saw that with Secret Invasion. So it's not to say that you don't have a vampire that's already in a high suit that's trying to now do that for their population. It's already there. But I feel like they're trying to put so much weight on this Blade movie to introduce different type of things that that's what they're bumping their heads into. But I literally just gave you two prime examples of how to introduce Blade into the MCU and how to give him a fair storyline where we get vampires, we don't get no bullshit, and we don't get anything that's dumb. And if y'all hadn't made Morbius already, Morbius could have been his first villain. But... Y'all already messed that up, so we have to pivot with that, and I think Lilith being the big bad for the Midnight Suns, and in this one, you could even potentially include Mephisto, because I know so many people want to see Mephisto, this, like, he could be, like, Lilith could be Loki, Thanos is, and, and more, uh, 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 damn, I just forgot his name, I'm about to call him Morbius, uh, y'all know I'm talking about the devil, the devil is Thanos, uh, but I would still just stick with Lilith for the first one so you don't shoot your load over. I think Lilith is a dope-ass uh, top villain for the Midnight Suns to go after. So that's just me. And then again, uh, and then if too, Lilith could also get a piece of some of like Doctor Strange's stuff within the, uh, in the Sanctum. So many opportunities there, and I've given a reason. If they do that shit, y'all know where it came from. You know where it came from. So. Dang, Eric Elliott, you missed it. We talked about Acolytes already. <laughs> we already talked about Acolytes. But we're going to keep it moving forward. Um, we have the Fantastic Four. I called it. I fucking said it. For those that didn't believe me, I said the shit. And it has been confirmed by Kevin Feige that the Fantastic Four is a period piece. It will take place within the 60s. And it is going to be in a different universe than Earth 616, the one that we have a focus on. I called that shit and they doing it. And I already said how they get tied into the MCU. Either an incursion happens or these fuckers went through the quantum realm and ended up somewhere else. And that's where they had to fight Galactus. Um, I'm not tripping about this. Being a period piece. Because. For me I feel like. The 60's and the Fantastic Four. Make more sense. I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know how to, how to explain it properly. But I am going to try. Fantastic Four. Seem. <laughs> How's the best way to put this. I'm trying to figure out the best way to put this. Fantastic Four are basic superheroes. And I don't mean that in a bad way. They, they have basic powers. Potential to be dope-ass powers, but they have basic powers nonetheless. Like, let's be honest. With every hero we know in the current, let's just stick with current MCU. A man who can stretch himself is not impressive to you. A man that looks like is made of all rocks is not impressive to you. Why? We have the Hulk. That's not that impressive. Oh, you set yourself on fire. That's not that impressive. Oh, you can go invisible. That's not that impressive. Like, these are people like if the Avengers were happening, who do you, do you really see them calling Sue Storm? Or the Human Torch? They're basic efficient powers but rewind that bitch to the 60s for someone in the 60s this is some epic ass shit to see because you don't see heroes like that so if they're public in the 60s yo that's a lot 
And then two, what's gonna be what's gonna be funny is if they're going to take that line from Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, wasn't that a group that charted in the sixties? I I'm I'm very curious to see if that's what's gonna happen because I feel like they will be like known to the public. So in the sixties, their powers look fucking amazing. The propaganda of how they are looks amazing. Even too for like like Doctor Doom. It works better for him in the 60s. Like this story is kind of like a 60s type story. I think that's why having them in the main, like in in the up to date universe when they made the Fantastic Four films, I don't think hit as hard. But for people for like in a set place like the 60s where superpowers have not really been discovered like that, they haven't really been, you know, like research like what's next like what do we do like even the word superhero may be somewhat foreign to him because remember like when ant-man was there ant-man was a covert operator the only person that you even maybe really had in the 60s was captain america but captain america was propaganda so that is also something where it's like, yo, you didn't see him every day. He seemed like a character. These are cats you're going to actually see be out there. So I think it works and it's very easy to shift them within the MCU by making it in the 60s. So we don't have to worry about, well, where have they been this whole time? What was going on with this? You can easily prop them into the MCU when it's necessary. Um... Eldon on YouTube has stated, if the Fantastic Four is in the 60s, could the catalyst of their powers be the space race? And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. They, El Eldon with that one comment just stated why this is going to work for the Fantastic Four. The damn space race. And then, get, and then guess what? They just happened to get a hold of to bust them out and lead them forward into the space race. The fucking Tesseract. Which becomes the the cause and the problems of what goes haywire for them to get their powers. It malfunctions. They go into this little realm where all of that shit shoots into them to give them powers. And it gets spat back right out. This shit about to write itself. For Fantastic Four, it's literally going to write itself. But I, uh, I think it's a good choice to be able to do it into the '60s and to announce that it's going to be in another universe, which also aids into us being within what they've labeled the multiverse saga. Since this is the multiverse saga for this phase, I think being able to do that works very well because one, you're not just keeping our focus on six one six. Um, you're being able to let us know different pinpoints in time and that how y'all are going to connect this when we get to Secret Wars, which I think is really cool because you know we already have the Fox universe. We already have the Sony universe. We already have the Marvel MCU, but we also now have Marvel animations. So for you to be able to have in the current MCU looking at different realities and making movies based off of those, I think is a nod to Kevin Feige's visions of what multiverse needs to look like. Um, Eric Elliott says they better add, they better address racism or that era. That's why I mentioned that court case. I man, that's gonna be very interesting uh, because uh, Eric Elliott also brought up the uh, will the Virginia versus Loving affect the the Reed relationship. Now you see, here's the thing though: we don't know if Reed is being considered Hispanic. They they might treat this like how they did Jessica Alba with uh, Sue Storm and made her white. We have not; it has not been confirmed that Pedro is Hispanic because remember he also played basically a white man in Wonder Woman eighty four. So we don't know if they're going to go full nationality with it or they're just going to portray Reed Richards as Reed Richards being played by Pedro Pascal and not actually Pedro Pascal's nationality included in Reed Richards' character. We don't know yet. Put Reggie Jackson in. Okay. But we, we are going to move 
the fuck on with this. Um, hopefully, with this news, we get to get a little bit more news um, later in the summer as we found out that Marvel will be returning back to Comic Con San Diego. They're going back to Hall H this year. Uh, Comic Con San Diego, I believe now is going to be Octo- in October, I believe October 3rd through the 6th, and Marvel will be in the house, and we already know what happens when they are at Comic Con, man, they drop the hammer down on what is coming out, so hopefully we get a little bit more news on Fantastic Four, hopefully we get a little bit more news on the Avengers, and possibly what the F is going on with Blade, and maybe a little bit more information on Daredevil itself, uh, the Punisher and the Thunderbolt. So much stuff that can potentially be talked about at this year's Comic Con, and I'm sure that Kevin Feige is not going to disappoint with them returning to Hall H for San Diego Comic Con. So I'm gonna try to get tickets or try to get some passes, and I believe we're going to go up there. We're going to get some shred of comic stuff going. Not promising anything, but we're definitely going to make an effort to try and get out of there. So glad to see that Marvel is back at uh, San Diego Comic-Con and looking forward to seeing what they're going to bring to the table this year in Hall H. Um, So also, in more movie news, um... What we thought was a joke actually isn't, and that Street Fighter is getting a live action film. And apparently, it has been in the works like for a little while now, and it is actually going to happen. Um, the Street Fighter movie is set, has already gotten a release date, it is set to drop March 20th, 2026. Um, now we do know though that the two directors, Danny and Michael uh, Filippo, um, are no longer part of the film, and it was due to scheduling conflicts. Nothing like Blade with like script writing, creative, or anything like that. It is simply just a conflict of scheduling that they won't be able to direct the film because of the slate that they have for the movie to drop. But it has been announced that a live action Street Fighter is dropping March twentieth, twenty twenty six. Um, now, unpopular opinion, I rather enjoyed the new reboot of the Mortal Kombat movie. Um, I know they're also coming out with a sequel that is going to be dropping. I don't know if it's dropping next year or actually going to drop in 2026. Um, I rather enjoyed the, the, the latest one that came out and... Street Fighter kind of can be the same way. The only thing that I'm going to say, um, and I know Big Beck 70 is saying Street Fighter needs the Tekken cast director because I want Ryu and Ken to look like themselves. I do agree. And the, the to add to that, literally just watch the animated Street Fighter movie. Make that. Just make that. Cast people who are accurate and just make that um i'm not going to say who i think should play who we're going to do a um episode of that where we're going to phantom cast the street fighter cast so um we're gonna i'm gonna hold off on that for now uh but we are going to have that to where we talk about who will be cast who we want to see cast even talk about some of the funny ones we would cast and we know will never happen but we do know street fighter has an official release date no other information has been given as to who they've cast or how they will be moving forward. But you already know, when I find out, y'all will find out. So, moving on to more news as well. Uh, in a recent interview, uh, Letitia Wright, who plays Shuri in Black Panther, Hinton and teased that she will be returning as her character within the MCU. Now, she didn't give any information as to when this is going to happen, but she did say that they uh, that Shuri will be making her return in the MCU. And um, not to be disrespectful, but no fucking shit. Duh. 
Like we did like why why did you say that like we didn't know that? Why would you not return? They're making young Avengers. Why would you not return as Shuri? You are the black you are Black Panther now. Why would you not like <laughs> I put this up here because I didn't get why this was news. Like they like like we get it. Like this, this has been different. If we were like, is Thor gonna come back? It's like you know what? Yeah, we just got confirmation that Thor will return because there's not a big reason why Thor should return outside of Secret Wars. But why would Shuri not return? That don't make no fucking sense. Like why would she not come back? So. Um, thank you for letting us know something obvious. Um, but I would like to know in the comments if y'all are excited that Shuri's coming back. I like I like Shuri. I think um due to Chad Boswick unfortunate passing, I believe a lot of weight was put onto that character's shoulders that uh, may have been a little bit more challenging to carry, but I would like to see the development of Shuri's character, especially going into a from Wakanda and moving into like the world of Avengers. Like, I want to see that happen. I want to see her be included, and even into to like however they're gonna move with the young Avengers, whether it be series or movie. But it's like it's just one of those kind of like duh type of things for me. So, um, look forward to seeing her within whatever project is next. Uh, as far as seeing um, Shuri within the MCU, but glad for her to tease that they she will be making a return. That's obvious. And our last story for today. Deadpool versus Wolverine. We are now about three weeks out. About three weeks out from this, this epic movie drop-in. And um, I had not been pissed at this movie this entire time until the recent clip that they dropped for Deadpool and Wolverine. And um, because in the honor of CT and the rest of the purists that watch this show, I'm not going to display what they showed. We know who they showed. Not going to say it because if some of you haven't seen it, not going to give it away. Um, and to easy not point, in looking at this picture, you're absolutely right. We do know those are CG arms for Wolverine. And I have also seen an image where we're going to get the full Wolverine suit. Like, no sleeves with the little things on there. Like, we, 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 getting, the, we getting the official Wolverine joint. Um, did not like that they released the scene that they currently released this week. Stop giving away shit, Okay. You're three weeks out, and you definitely did not need to show that. You could have literally stuck to promo like how y'all had with the Heineken commercial, where Wolverine tries to pull his claws out, there's nothing there, and, and Deadpool took his animanium to make animanium Heineken cans. Try to say that shit uh, five times fast. Um, why are you showing, why are you giving away dope-ass footage? And it's just like... Stop. Stop. Because now you putting it on like, oh, well, that's just one of them. We got plenty of those that's even better than that. Stop setting yourself up for this failure. Because you're going to put it to where expectations get too high. And that might be one of your best cameos that you gave out. Stop giving away the movie. I already still don't know what this movie is about. Do not give it away with three weeks out into the film. We are hooked. You got us. I'm about to spend $130 to go watch this on June or July 26. You already got us set. Do not do this, Marvel. You have a fucking problem doing this shit where you want to give too much away before this movie starts. As a person that does digital content when it comes to these movies, when it comes to these television shows, there are just some things that it's like, yo, it is worth the wait. I do not, I am not a type of person that feels like I need to be the first to report. Oh, new images being given out. Oh, we finally got the plot to Deadpool. Like, no. 
I want you to enjoy the film. We can talk about it. We can talk about some of the things. We can talk about what we think we may see. Stop giving us shit before the fucking movie comes out. I am so tired of people just being so anxious to want to know what's about to happen before you go see it. Go be surprised at the movie. Stop needing 30% of the movie to be convinced that you want to go see it. Either you're going to go see the shit or you're not going to go see the shit. Either you a true fan and you're going to watch it or you a bullshitter and you ain't going to go see it. But stop giving away so much. You gave us enough with seeing you and him in the suit. You gave us enough seeing Fox, uh, 20th Century Fox logo in the background. I didn't mind seeing the cameo of uh, Pyro. We were good on that. But for you to give away such a dope ass scene just to get what more like are you like are you not making money? Because didn't you already make 260 million on pre-sales? Stop trying to give stop trying to appease these bullshit people on the internet that gotta just know everything that's happening so they can go see it. I hate that y'all have taken away the surprise of a movie, the spectacle of being able to go see something that you have no idea what it's really about to be about. You have no idea what to expect. Now I know that scene is coming and I'm going to be preparing myself to see when that scene comes up. And it's like, oh, yeah, here's the scene that they showed us in, in the fucking whole ass clip. Stop that shit, man. You need to have more trust in the audience, more trust in the true fandom that people want to see this shit. You do not have to keep giving so many dope ass clips away just so you can get into this motherfucker. And I'm so tired of that shit. I am so tired of seeing people on IG who, who do digital content and stuff like us like this that just need to have this stuff. I don't mind people like new rock stars. New rock stars let you know like, hey, we're going to jump into this. Spoilers ahead. You don't have to watch this. But they handle their stuff with class. Some of you basic bitches who just can't wait to be the first to say it so you can get a fucking like. You can sharpen some pencils and fall on them bitches, man. I'm so sick of you motherfuckers doing this shit. Let people enjoy cinema. And don't hit me with that fucking punk ass shooter. Oh, well, don't follow us. We don't have no control of that because you hit the, spoil the explore page and your shit just automatically pop up. I gotta go to commercial real quick, man. That shit got me tight. I gotta go to commercial. We're gonna go to commercial real quick. <laughs> Apologies. Got a little frazzled. Got a little frazzled. I got a little frazzled. And I wasn't as loud as I as I could have been. I was being respectful because of where I'm at right now. But I don't like this shit, man. And and, and that shit need to change, bro. I, I I don't like this. I don't like this constant need of needing to be first of needing to want to get a like by being first no kind of decorum set for other people that want to sh see shit you got pages that are literally just dedicated to wanting to give shit away to just tell stuff like even giving away the entire plot of what the film is being told like hey man we just found this out this person is cast he here are all the pictures of showing like what's gonna happen it's like I miss the days like when we were in the 90s when you didn't have social media in regards to movies. All you got was a trailer. You got maybe some commercial spots to where you can go see stuff. That was it. If you wanted to go see the trailer again, you had to go to imdb.com. That's the international movie database. You had to go to places like that to go see the trailer. 
You may have somebody that could break down the trailer a little bit for you. And then that'd be about it. But even then, too, when those trailers came out, you didn't know much about the movie. You just knew, okay, this is in it. Oh, we got this cat. Okay, you didn't know what it was about all my, already. You was hooked, though. Then you got the interviews where you see like a few like a few clips, nothing nothing too dramatic, a good little one minute clip of a conversation that gets you hooked. Then entertainment news will release some behind the sets photos or a photo shoot, not too many, but just enough for us to get a clear image of like let's say for instance Hugh Jackman in the Wolverine suit, and that was it. You didn't know too much of what was going on, but you were already hooked. You were ready to go. You were ready for Friday to come so you can go watch the movie. If you were allowed to, you can go see the 12, 12 a.m. screening. Social media and the way the society is set up has taken the glamour of being surprised away. It has taken away so much stuff, man, just away, just so you can get a fucking like, just so you can get an engagement. Like, yo, do you think I don't want my videos to be sitting at millions of views and being seen and people talking about my opinion? Yes. And I know a way that I can make that fucking happen by just giving shit away. But then what does that make me? What does that make this for you? Don't everybody want to know everything just yet? We want to know enough just so we can have a conversation about it. Just so we can continue being excited for it. Not for us to know the whole damn movie before, before in the trailer before we get to go see it. So we already practically know the movie and then just paid $130 to go to the movie theaters for a movie we damn near already know. Just because... You don't want to go waste your money and be like, oh, this movie was dumb. I ain't know it was about to be dumb. That's what watching a movie is about. The mystery of is this movie going to hit or is this movie going to miss? Is this movie going to make me feel something? Is this movie going to make me laugh? Is this movie going to make me cry? Is this movie going to make me piss the fuck off? And is there going to be a villain that's going to make me so fucking upset that they deserve an Oscar for the performance they gave because they made me feel something? Y'all take away 40% of that feeling just so you could be the first one on here to show some shit and snitch, which is what you basically doing, being some ratty ass movie snitches and ruining experience and then want to use the coward, the coward's excuse of, well, you don't have to follow me if you don't want to see this stuff. But then you got an algorithm that is focused on the person getting there first and giving out the headline that that's what we're shown now. We don't we don't have the option to just not follow you anymore, because as soon as I do that, but I'm liking something like, let's say, for instance, my show as you as the audience. Now you're going to start getting suggestions and it's going to be that same bullshit ass account that's giving away everything that is now being on your suggestion and please believe i'm not talking about one direct page either just so we're clear i'm i'm not i'm I just, I, that's why i don't give a name or anything like that it is not one particular page this is just a general call for these pages i am not particularly pointing to one particular page and uh for this of what i'm saying i just want to make sure that that's very clear but it's like yo what happened to our fucking humanity for others what happened to thinking about people and others before just coming out with stuff? Like, people don't even put the, the hey, spoiler alert. You got a few pages that'll do that. Like, say, hey, these are potential spoilers before you slide to the right. Just, just making sure you know because we don't want to give nothing away. And I respect pages that do that. But you got some that just, bow, right there. And I'm like, man, bro, I didn't even get a chance to scroll up. And my eyes then caught the image and the fucking headline already. You don't give two shits about that. You don't give no common courtesy. You don't give no, no, no kind of disregard to people that maybe just don't want to see that just yet. No, you just worry about being first. And that's sad. That's some sad ass shit, man. 
That's some sad ass shit. And that's why we get results like how we got with what Deadpool released this week. And it wasn't necessary to release it. It, it was not necessary for you to give that to us. We were so hyped about what cameos that we're going to see. We're trying to figure out what cameos we're going to see. Now y'all just giving them away? And we only three weeks out? Like that, that, that trailer was not needed. We did not, to be honest with you, we did not need another Deadpool trailer. If I'm being 100% honest, that's how much we, if you are a fan of Marvel, you're already hooked. And you did not need that whatsoever. No one needed another trailer for Deadpool. You could have gave us so many different ad type shits where Ryan Reynolds is just talking shit as Deadpool that has nothing to do with the movie. Same thing with Hugh Jackman. And we would have been still ready to go see this on July 26th. You giving shit away is just like, yo, stop bending to the will of these folks that don't give a fuck about humanity no more. That's all I'm saying. And I could talk about that shit all day, but I don't want to sit here and rant too much on that. Um, but that is the the closing episode uh, story that I have for today. Uh, so hopefully someone hears this and they do better. But um that's going to be it for another episode of Stride of a Comic Book. I have been your host, Will Farrow. Let me know in the comments below what do you think about some of the highlighted stories from the Deadpool and Wolverine. Are they showing too much stuff? From uh, Are you going to check out The Bear? Are you excited for the DC Superman Legacy uh, movie after seeing some of the new set photos that have came out? Um, be sure to like and subscribe to the YouTube channels the Twitch channels, as well as our socials, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, all of those are straight out of a comic book or mine, which is Will Farrow, P-H-A-R-A-O-H. The only exception is X. It is going to be S-O-A-C-B, which is the acronym for straight out of a comic book, which is S-O-A-C-B. And my twi Twitter is the same as everything else. It is Will Farrow, P-H-A-R-A-O-H. Until next time. Have an enjoyable Saturday, and I will see you within the comic book spaces.